Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Grow Healthy Grooming. It is a virtual happy hour. I had a glass of wine. I already drank it. So this is now, um, I basically made myself a tidal wave and figured why waste a second glass. So I'm going to just check with my team to make sure we are live. We should be streaming on YouTube and on also on Facebook. If you guys want to help me, go ahead and go ahead and um, post in the chat. Now, if you guys need to be able to, as you can see on the side, if you want to see, if you want me to see your name on there, go ahead and click chat.restream.io slash FBTO. That's to let me know that you guys are going to be able to see your name and everything, which will be awesome. Oh, wonderful, Tiffany. Want to make sure that we are live in Facebook and um, all of the groups. <clears throat> so it's awesome, guys, is during our happy hour, we can relax together. You can ask questions. I'm here for you guys if you have any questions. And Tiffany is also, uh, my virtual assistant is going to help us be able to uh, find questions in the groups, which, you know, is not always the easiest. Wonderful. Tiffany said we are live in all three places. Woo -woo. Now, I did see someone post, uh, they asked a question. They said, hey, sorry for the late random message. I can message you another form if you prefer. That's perfectly fine. I'm looking at your classes and trying to decide which one is best for my business. I'm wanting to do a price increase at the beginning of the year, but fear doing a class now be too late. So if you guys are interested, and I'm going to just copy this. That way you guys can see the question. Boop, boop. So this is the question. So what I would tell this person is that I really feel like the foundational things for the savvy groomer for what we teach is the price increase masterclass. So the price increase masterclass lets you know how much your business should be charging. And of course, there's different things that you should be looking for when you're charging, right? And I wish I could go through all of them now. But the main points are, is are you charging hourly by breed or what we consider the hybrid or the best method, which is the point system, right? And then are you charged, how much are you charging more for a big dog versus small dog? Um, whether you guys are interested in taking the membership model, the pay masterclass or one of our other masterclasses, I really feel like it's incredibly important that you guys start with that price increase masterclass or make sure your prices make sense across the board. Um, I know in the pay masterclass, we had a few students that chose not to take the price increase masterclass first. And then when they came to figuring out their pay, they realized, hey, this pay works for our small dogs. But then when we move this pay to a big dog, it actually makes them suffer. It makes that employee, unfortunately, suffer. And that's not really fair, right? We don't want to hear that. We don't want to do that. So we want you guys to do the best possible. And if you're going to do the Price Increase Masterclass, there's different ways of doing it, right? You can absolutely, of course go ahead and, you know, do the self-study. If you pay in full for the self-study, you can do all six weeks within a weekend. You can just bang them all out, right? Alternatively, if you are going to go ahead and let's say, you know, you want to take some time, you can do that. It's, you know, again, it's fairly easy to get through those weeks. Now, don't misunderstand just because it's easy doesn't mean that when I say that the class is easy. It does take effort. It does take time and it does take I'm going to say commitment, you know, it's like anything, right? I mean, I think sometimes doing the math sucks and that's where some of you guys may choose to buy the three additional hours. Um, they are currently, those one-on-one -on -one coaching hours are half off. They are going to be going up. Um, we're going to be only offering them at 25% off and that's a one-time bonus for you guys. And then the other way of doing it is through our group support. So the Savvy Groomer Praise Increase Masterclass plus group support 
is really helpful if you want to have a community and you get six months worth of support with that. All right, so let me go ahead and message Tiffany. I feel so lost. I don't, where are my peeps? Tiffany, if you can see me, can you go ahead and post in the chat to make sure the chat is working? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to pull up Facebook to see what questions we have either in the group or while we are live. Excellent. So Tiffany, what questions might we have from the group? And again, if you guys have any questions you want me to answer live, I'm more than happy to do it live. And I love that we're here live together and we're able to have some community time together. Hey, Tiffany, good to see you here, girly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alan Paulo, you're funny. What tart of Jamaica right near the beach? So here is a question that we got. So professionals that have a membership fee, do you charge at the beginning of the year when they sign up? What system do you use for scheduling? So for a membership model, we teach five different membership models. which We teach the enrollment fee, which is where they pay basically for the ability to be allowed to be one of your clients. There's different ways of doing that where you can have them pay one large fee at the beginning of the year. You can have them pay um, twice a year. But I generally suggest once a year they pay for the right to be one of your clients, right? And that's an enrollment fee. So that's how they would pay for that fee. Another way would be our unlimited bath program. For the majority of you guys, that's not going to be the right fit. And then the other three ways we suggest are the niche, which again is to like go down really small, figure out exactly who you want to deal with. Um, our mobile, so if you're mobile, that's really important that you're figuring out how much time that's going to take, right? Um, and then I'm having a brain freeze. I know there's always one um, and I'm always forgetting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the Savvy Groomer page from, boop, and let me see if I can share it. I love that I'm like trying to learn all this new technology. I'm like, well, I hope this is going to work. So share screen. Oh, look at that. Hang on. Boom. I think I can share it this way. There we go. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah. Technology. Whoop, whoop. So on, so this is savvygroomer.com slash MM, right? In this, we talk about all the different things that we're going to learn. And then we teach pricing and points. I love this. So I love this. Like, yeah, it, with a membership, you can predict your income. You can predict your variables. So in module one, we talk about who is the membership for, then how do we charge for it, the membership different structures, right? What membership model works best for you. Then, you know, again, how does it work on the back end? How do you actually sell it to clients? And then client objections. Um, and we also give you guys a free copy of the pricing and points with your membership. Um, and we have contract examples for those of you guys interested in a membership where you guys can actually take those, uh, you know, we have five different professionally written contracts that you guys can use. So that, that was a big deal because again, having them a contract written allows you to be able to, again, try to sell this and actually keep people on task. All right, so Tiffany, you want to send me next question, please? I know it's always tough when it's live because there's always a little bit of a delay. And I can pop in here too. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I hope everyone had a really happy Merry Christmas and they had fun. Um, I know I did. I mostly just did, you know, um, ended up, honestly, I went to Ikea. I got some stuff done, nothing crazy, but it was really important to me to be able to like get some stuff done. And since my son was around, I was able to like paint my bedroom, which sounds really boring, but it worked out really well for me. Made me really happy. So I really can't complain. You know, I think that everyone is different and um, it's all about what you want, right? Mm. Thank you, Tiffany. And Tiffany, you can send the next one too that way. Because I know there's going to be a bit of a delay. So here's another question. Oh, so Jamie, this is great. So Jamie asked, can you tell me more about the point system as far as to determine how many points a dog is and how to apply that to dollars? So in the class of pricing and points, we go more in depth of the, the reason why we do this. But let me give you a really quick overview. So with the pricing and points, the way that we explain it basically is figuring out how you're going to create your baseline. Now, for me, my baseline is a Shih Tzu. So it's a, a two point dog is a Shih Tzu, let's say getting a five strip round teddy bear face, really reliable, consistent dog, right? It's cooperative. It's a good dog. It, I shouldn't say good, but you know, it's not going to give me any trouble. It's not a biter or anything like that, right? So that's where I start my two points. Now I'm going to have one point for the bath. That'd be bath, blow dry, nails, ears, prepping the dog. And then one point for the haircut. And I would say this dog would take about an hour. Now for some of my power groomers, it's going to take them 45 minutes. And then for some of my, um, let's say, you know, baby groomers or younger groomers, it might take them a little bit longer, right? It might take them an hour and 15, but it's in that kind of range, right? So we're saying about an hour. And so if that dog is my two point dog, then we have to consider what are some other factors that are adding in points. So things like, again, is that two point dog about 10 pounds, let's say. So then at what point is that dog oversized, whether that's due to being overweight or having a health condition, right? And again, dogs that are unhealthy should cost more to groom because that dog is, you have to be more careful. You have to be more in touch with their veterinarian. So you may add a point. So for easy math, let's say that a Shih Tzu is two points and is $50. Well, then a point could be worth $25, for instance. And again, it really needs to work for your business, but just as an example, right? So let's say each point is $25. Now, that doesn't mean that your bath dogs are 25. You could have a minimum dollar amount, right? So you could have your minimum dollar amount be, let's say, $40, right? And then that's where you're like, okay, so I don't bathe anybody under $40. I mean, I really wouldn't have your hair cut at 50 if your minimum price is $40 for a chihuahua bath, but let's just say that for giggles, right? Then it's like, okay, so then a chihuahua with an extra point, again, this is where you're, you would stop and say, hey, that doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make sense that a chihuahua who bites for its nails would be the same price as a shih tzu getting a haircut or, you know, at least in that scale, right? And so we would add points for big dogs. For instance, a standard poodle getting a five strip would be a minimum, right? Of four to six points, depending upon your business, right? So it might be four points for a five strip. I mean, I'm talking like a 45 pound poodle. And I'm, I mean, literally getting like a basic kennel clip, right? And then as we go, we might be like, okay, you know, it's getting clean feet and clean face. Well, that might be a point, right? Because again, I can't handle somebody, you know, I can't hand a dog getting clean feet, clean face if they're a baby groomer. I have to either pay to train that person or, you know, I have to pay somebody more in theory, right, to know how to do that. Um, and especially as we're trying to hire more people and train more people, I have to build that into my pricing. Um, the same thing with patterns. And I had a, a playful jest with 
one of my students because they're like, no, a patterned cocker, a patterned schnauzer takes me less time. And I said, yes. And you've been grooming 20 years and you love doing patterns. It really fills you up. And I said, but it's important that if you hire someone new that you charge more for a pattern because either you have to teach that person how to set a pattern, right? Or you have to have someone who's been grooming long enough that they know how to set a pattern, right? Unless if you like cool skirts, which is fine too. Not here to judge, but right. I mean, that's the reality. I mean, a lot of people come out of the corporate stores or they come out of these online grooming schools doing these hula scoop, you know, hula skirts and they're not attractive and they don't look good. And now you have to train them and that's either money or time, right? Either you've got to go to a trade show and they need that instruction or you need to pay for them to have one-on-one instruction, or you have to be the one giving them one-on-one instruction, right? And so, yeah, if your Shih Tzu is two points and 50 bucks for easy math, then that would mean that standard poodle kennel clip starts at 100. And that standard poodle getting clean feet, clean face, and a pattern would be at least six points, which would make it at least 150. And there's some breeds that I would start higher points. Like doodles, I generally start at 200 bucks. And again, if our point system was two points for 50 bucks, right? That would be an eight point dog. And I do think that the majority of us, if we said, hey, do you want to do five easy five strip sh- shih tzus or do you want to groom, you know, one doodle? And a lot of us would be like, you know, I'd rather do the four easy Yorkies, Maltese shih tzus, in case you don't like shih tzus. I would rather do four Yorkies than one doodle. And I think the majority of groomers that are coming into our industry feel the same way. Um, and I think that's the hard part, right? So that's where the point system really helps. It also makes things fair. If I am a 10 point groomer, right? Where I can groom five small dogs a day. Then if one doodle is eight points, six to eight points, then I can do a doodle and two Shih Tzus, or I can do a doodle and one Shih Tzu. (coughs) Sorry. And so that helps them kind of stop burnout and also make it easier to do that. And like I said, we teach all about how to do, so the pricing and points goes over how to actually look at the points. Um, and Tiffany, if you want to put the, um, you know, the sales page for pricing and points. Um, however, in the pay masterclass, we actually go further and we actually teach you how to pay your staff based on this point system, which was really, really fun. Um, it was a really fun class to do. So I hope that helps, Jamie. If you have more questions, feel free to follow up, and I'm happy to answer more of them uh, during the hour. So the next question we had, and thank you, Tiffany, for sending it, was, does anyone keep cards on file? Debating implementing this for the new year, and it would help me with no-shows and last-minute cancellations so I can charge cards. I'm wondering how people will go about this and what to do if there's pushback on those. Um, I'm a big fan of having new clients. And again, it does depend upon your online system, right? Depending upon your online system is really going to be how easy it is. Um, I really love systems, and we won't name names, but there are online uh, software, and you can always message them and ask them, right? And you can let them know, like, hey, I want people to apply, right? Fill out an application for a new clientele and get a card on file. Um, and you can also send your waiver in a lot of these things, right? And you can actually, for better or worse, go ahead and have it so that you, um, sorry, I'm just reading comments, getting distracted. You know, again, when they're applying for the waiver, they can, again, put that card about. I really think it's important to have a card on file. I think that it it levels the playing field. I block off time for you to come to my business, right? I don't, I don't double and triple book, right? We are not the airlines. We are not rental car companies. If you guys ever seen that Seinfeld episode 
where it's like, I had a reservation. We ran out of reservations. Like we don't have that, right? We don't, you don't show up at the groomers and they're like, oh, we overbooked ourselves. Sorry, you need to leave, right? We don't do that. And we're not like hospitals or doctors where you're just waiting around for hours, right? Even if the dog is meant to be here for four hours, you know, we've planned that. It's not like, cool, like we're just going to put you there or even in a nail salon. I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen where you go to the nail salon and they're like, no, 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 sit down and like get your feet all wet. And I mean, I've had times where I sat with my feet in the water waiting for a pedicure for an hour and a half, right? Um, even if I've had an appointment. So I think that's really important. And again, I think that having that waiver and being very clear um, on your expectations of clients. Um, and I think it's really important to have that not be taken over the phone, ideally, both for your safety as a business owner, but also the fact that, and again, this is my personal feeling, I think it's easier for them to argue with a computer than with me, right? So if they have to fill out something or if they have to put in a waiver and put that card on file, right, or pay something online that then requires a card on file, they're arguing with the machine. Um, and it, it just makes life a lot easier for me, right? Again, if that's also where I teach you guys not to have your phone number. If they have to fill out a new client application, if they have to book their first appointment online, they can argue at the computer, but if they don't have a way of reaching you, they have to book it and then you have their information and then you can reach out to them. And then you, it just levels the playing field, right? Um, I think that's really important, right? And I think that's, again, I, I feel like maybe it's not fair. And again, if you're going to do it over the phone, you just be very matter of fact and kind. You know, you just say, nope, this is just the way we do it. If you want to hear a really good example of how people handle it, call companies like spas that actually take a card on file and require a card on file. Um, and again, Massage Envy, teaches their people how to do this all the time. They will not book you if you do not have a card on file. And again, you could start taking deposits. You could be like new clients have deposits. Um, if you're talking about current clients, you can just say, hey, for everyone's ease, we're going to have cards on file, right? So I think those are the main things I would point out there. Um, and I hope that helps. All right, let me move down. I'm so glad that helped. Thank you, Jamie. And again, I try. Whoop. Let me see. <clears throat> hey, Tara, great to see you. Do you have any advice for businesses who are anxious to hire employees? My biggest fear is having an employee quit with no notice again. So this is where we're creating the hire, manage, pay, like three parts. So it's six weeks for each one. Mega class, whatever we're going to call it. It's like the mess domestic class. Um, and so there's a lot involved with hiring, knowing who you are as a leader, and knowing the way you're going to build your business. I will say that the majority of us do not take, unfortunately, the time to really sit down and say, okay, who is the person you need to hire? What is the thing? And it's really important for us to outsource literally everything we can before hiring that person. And when we're hiring that person, we need to take, and I know it's going to sound crazy, you take at least 90 days of coaching them and training them and walking them through things. And that means that you're going to lose money those first 90 days. Because then that first 90 days, they're feeling you out, you're feeling them out. It's a probationary period. At any point in that 90 days, you could fire them and they could, or they could quit. And when people quit, we want to say, why did they quit? Did they quit because they thought the grooming industry was playing with puppies? Or did they quit because your business wasn't the right fit? Did they quit because, for better or worse, we ignored the red flags of their own mental health? Right? There's so many different things that a lot of times we do as groomers to ignore these things. Um, we just did pay. And part of pay was calculating. And again, I teach pay based on an hourly plus bonus structure using the point system. So I have 
things in place in the pay masterclass. And Tiffany, if you want, go ahead and put up the pay masterclass, um, you know, uh, page if people want to read more about it. But in pay, we talk about, okay, what are the things that you're offering besides an hourly wage? Um, and using the point system, we can calculate bonuses. So we teach you guys how to add for your groomers for that thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar a quarter bonus, right? And using the points to kind of create and mold our behavior the best that we can. Um, and with that, it's also what other benefits are you offering? Are you offering a gym? Are you offering some sort of um, massage package or chiropractic package? What season of life is your employee in? Um, we're just wrapping up and getting ready to do manage. Um, we're going to be offering it as a beta to the people that have taken pay. And so in manage, we're going to be talking about, okay, what season of life is your employee in? Because if I have 20 year old groomers or bathers, they don't care if I offer a 401k in healthcare. But if I have 30 turning 40 year old, they may, right? And do they just want to burn and, you know, a turn and burn kind of groomer, right? Do I want to just have someone where I burn out and then I, I let them go? There's so much involved. So if you're anxious about hiring employees, a lot of it is not having as much control as you want. And I will say, guys, it sounds terrible. I would always try to hire two people at the same time for one position because the likelihood that one will fall out is really high, especially if they're bathers. Less so if they've been groomers for a long time. But even then, if I hire two people for one position, that allows me, right, and hopefully the other groomer, because I'm not just adding. So when I hire a groomer, they're I'm not grooming the full day. When they're in their probationary period, they're grooming my dogs, my dogs, right? Because I need to make sure that they're doing what they need to do, and I need to be there to guide them. I really can't sit there and let two perfect strangers in my business, right? They don't know what my business is about. They don't know exactly what I want done and how I want it done. I need to be there to nurture them and help them. So I think that's where when we hire employees, we need to accept the fact that we need to be there to train them and coach them and help them. So I hope that helps. Um, here's uh, whoever that is, feel free uh, on Facebook. It won't let Restream write your name. So if you want to like click on one of the links and Tiffany, I'm sure you can share uh, the link if you want to post. I'd love to know who this is. So um, I'm so glad that helped Tara. So do you have a bundle of all your classes you're recommending? So right now, it is something actually we talked about on the team meeting uh, today, just so you know. But so we have a bundling of our workshops, which are not our master classes, by the way. Um, our workshops. And Tiffany, can you post uh, the uh, workshop, the um, the Grow Wealthy Grooming Business Workshop Library? So we have a bundling of at least 15 to 20 of our best workshops. And those are a great place for you to start. But as far as our master classes, our master classes are more of an investment. They start as a self-study at $600. Um, and we are considering doing a higher level membership that would include all of are, um, hang on, I'm trying to click it. That's okay. And I'm laughing. I'm like, I need to, boop, boop, boop. here we go. Then I can show you because I want to show you what I'm talking about. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, so we have some of our most, like we have the pricing and points and it's a yearly membership for 200 we have our money or morals, our bookkeeping basics, how to plan for retirement. We are going to be updating this this year, I promise. Every year we do to make sure that it is accurate. Um, identifying and tracking your soulmate client. We have a, a planner about onboarding clients and dealing with difficult clients, once a year clients and how you should best deal with them. Your zone of genius, preventing burnout, personal reset, you know, take control and organize your business office. We have a lot that goes into these, right? Oh, you can't see what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So these are like literally all the different classes that come in the business workshop library. And 
this is a great place to start if you like our YouTube and you're not ready to invest in a masterclass. A lot of these classes are sold separately for $47,197. So getting it for the year for $197 is a better deal. That said, the price increase masterclass, the masterclasses are more of an investment, but they're six, at least six hours. So they're a lot more in depth and they kind of walk you through everything. So I hope that helps. Michelle is saying, not sure if there's a right place to ask. Any insight into ways of increasing sales beyond physically grooming, add-on specials, retail? I really need to increase my sales, but I'm maxed out physically as far as grooming hours. And I can't take on employees as, hang on one second, as I'm finding, oh, um, bah, 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 bah. grooming and can't take on more please as of yet. I'm already priced higher in my area and doing an increase in January, but I'm finding my problem to be a single parent, single income, yep, is not where I need or want to be. So, one second, I go. Thank you guys. So, so this is, yes, I do, but I want to say you want to be really clear on who your soulmate client is and what is special about your business. And the reason I mentioned that is because the majority of people that are wanting to add money, like specials or retail, I generally push them, or I shouldn't say push, I generally suggest strongly you guys consider a membership model. And that is they pre, you have a set number of clients, they prepay. It is at a higher amount and they are, it's guaranteed money and they're every four weeks and they're perfectly easily behaved. And the reason why you do that is because you have guaranteed set income as a single parent. And I know what that feels like. I've been a single parent. I remember what it's like to be like the buck stops with me. If I don't make money, they don't eat. So one of the main reasons that I would suggest for that instance to do a membership is because I already have their money. And then I can allocate that money. And then I can look and say, okay, I have this much money. And again, let's say, again, for easy math, let's say that you have for your, you know, you have a hundred like spots for grooming, and then you would take 80 spots and then spread that over the hundred, right? So they're paying more for the membership, but they're guaranteed to groom and you're full. You have a hundred, you have a hundred percent full every four week clients. And that makes life easier. And then from there, it's like, okay, now that I have 100% membership clients, right? Now that everyone that comes into my shop is definitely my soulmate client, they're committed to me, especially as we go towards this recession. Then I can say to my members, hey, members, what is something that you would like to see? Now, what's awesome is if you are 100% membership, if you then offer a non-member groom, at a significantly higher price. And by significantly higher, say at least 25%. So if let's say right now you're $85 for a Shih Tzu, a membership fee, which means every month they prepay for their groom, one groom a month at $100. And then you have all the people you need, right? And you have, let's say more time off, things are a little bit easier, right? And then you have extra space technically, right? For those extra clients, you could then, make a new client or a non-member groom 125. Now, if you're like, okay, what about retail? Well, you need to know who is coming in your shop and what they're going to buy. And retail very rarely, unless if you're doing it at high volume, is going to make you a ton of money. I will say there are definitely business coaches in this industry who love retail. I feel like for the amount of money you have to risk, and again, I have a very low risk tolerance, guys. You guys know that my risk tolerance is pretty small. So when I think about, do I really want to have this risk? Do I want to do it? And then for add-ons, again, the amount of time you're going to spend for the amount of money that's going to go through your door. Again, there are business coaches who love add-ons. I think for the most part, it detracts from us being for better or worse, I think it really detracts from us being a professional. Um, and you want to ask yourself, is your soulmate client the kind of client that wants add-ons? Um, I am a high-end client. I like to go somewhere and I want the best. 
And so I would be pissed if I went to a hair salon and I said to them, hey, I want to get my hair blonde. And they said, no problem. And they're like, okay, do you want to pay $10 more for this better shampoo? I bet. what do you mean this better shampoo? Like, yeah, it's 10 bucks more to use the better shampoo. I'm like, so why wouldn't you just give me the better shampoo? All right. And then while I'm getting my hair done, they're like, oh, do you want to pay $20 more for Olaplex? I'm like, well, do I need it? And they said, well, it's better for your hair not to break. I'd be like, well, why wouldn't you just include that in the price? You are accidentally undermining yourself. And some people are like, no, I really like having those like seasonal spas. But again, let's say they're $15 as an add-on. How much time are you spending selling them up front, right? It's one thing, again, if you're just very naturally a good salesperson, but if you're spending five minutes selling them, you, you know, let's say you, you ask 10 people a day and you spend five minutes selling each person this item. You've just spent 50 minutes trying to sell a $15 add-on where you could have probably, you know, again, how many of those are you going to sell? If you're a 10 out of 10, you've made money. But if you get a one out of 10, now you've lost money, right? Because to say, you know, to spend 50 minutes to sell, right, a $15 product, you could have just as easily added another dog. And again, you want to be careful with your body. But that's also where I always mention to people, is everyone on your schedule getting groomed four weeks or less? Is everyone you're grooming behave for better or worse? you know, easier, better, right? And that that's complicated. So that's something you want to consider. But I, I just feel like if you're going to put out the money for retail, what is that retail? And how are you going to make your money back? And for the most part, it's really hard for retail to compete with things like Walmart or Amazon or Chewy, right? So whatever you buy must be something that people are going to continuously buy or it's going to be something that your clients have asked for specifically and they can only get from you. And that's becoming harder and harder, guys. It's becoming so hard to buy something. And a lot of the things that are like really cheap and have high, high like markup value, they don't sell well. Like we're like, oh, I'm going to buy toys. So you spend $100 or $200 in toys. It sits on your shelf for six months right? It may or may not get stolen, unfortunately. And the more retail you add, you're going to have to sell it, right? So if you have somebody who, again, you're checking in the dog, you know, instead of them leaving, they might hang out up front. Are you going to stay up front? Do you have a receptionist staying up front? Depends, right? And then if you start selling dog food, what if you run out of their dog food? What if you run out of their flavor? What if the food goes bad? What if you get mice in your shop? There's so many things that can go wrong with retail. I think the majority of us are not prepared for that, right? <coughs> it's kind of like when I see these retail shops wanting to add grooming to make extra money. And I'm like, it's a whole nother animal. So just be careful when you're doing that. Mm. And again, guys, feel free to ask any more questions. We're going to be wrapping up shortly. So any questions after this question, I'll answer. But then after that, we will wrap up our happy hour. Whoop, whoop, and then we'll go again next month. So Ruth had a great question. Do you think that bathers should have a percentage of tips? Oh, this was actually, oh, Tara asked what I'm drinking. This is called Tidal Wave. Um, I had me a glass of wine. I'm not going to lie. Um, and then I decided I wanted something more Caribbean um, because my, I'm not going to lie. My computer was not cooperating. No one's shocked. And I was like, you know what? I need something a little harder. So it tastes delicious. So, and it's blue. And I, I feel like it's fancier in a glass. I tried to find my martini glasses. Could not find them. So it was really fun. Now, we didn't go over um, paying tips in the pay masterclass, but we are going to be talking about it in um, manage because it's kind of a, it's a tough subject. So 
um, Jim Atchison, who works with me sometimes, he's an attorney and tips get really complicated. So the problem with tips is in some states, so in some states, let me put it this way. Oh, hey, Emily, Merry Christmas to you too. I did have a good Christmas. You know, I got what's done. So with a percentage of tips with your bathers. So in some states, if you are a manager, you cannot share tips with the people that you manage. And what becomes really gray is that depending upon who is doing the dog, right? So, so let me put it this way. Let's take you as the owner out of the equation. Let's say you don't split tips with anybody. Let's say if you have a groomer and your groomer has a bather. Well, then isn't the groomer technically the manager of the bather, right? Because they're telling the bather what to do. They're telling them how often to do things. They're telling them how to do things. They're managing the results, right? Because if I have a bather who I, you know, if I'm the groomer, that dog better come to my table, not entangle free, blow dried, nails clipped, ears cleaned, everything done, right? So in some states, managers and their underlings cannot share tips. So that's one consideration. <clears throat> um, yes, Emily, we did agree to do manage, just so you know, and we're going to be offering it to you as a beta test. And we're going to be, we're going to actually messaging you guys tomorrow um, that if you guys want to do it as a beta, we're going to be launching it um, in January to the people that have done pay that way you guys can continue to learn and we can, uh, very honestly, you know, we really appreciate how much insight we got from you guys and I think that would be great. So we can kind of run it as a beta. If you guys have not done pay and you are interested in enjoying the manage class, message me and I'll give you guys some more um, insight. And you can message me either on Facebook, um, you know, for River Lee or um, the Savvy Groomer, either one is fine. But anyway, let me, let me get focused back. I get very easily distracted. Don't mind me. I know. I feel like a lush right now. I'm like, I had a whole glass of wine. I'm having a cocktail. Boop, boop. So first things first, who are they managers? Can they even split tips? So let's say they legally can, right? This is where I think culture really matters. Um, and it's funny because Emily actually has already heard my feelings on this. So it's going to be kind of funny. She gets to hear it again. So... I personally think it comes down to how are like, what is the role of the bather and what is your goal as a business owner with that bather? Now, my personal suggestion is that a bather should be a transition phase into becoming a grooming assistant and then becoming a groomer. Now, if someone wants to become a professional bather where all they're doing is bath dogs, it's a very different consideration, right? So that's where I personally feel like, to me, it's a culture issue. Am I building a culture of generosity where my groomers are going to tip my bathers? And again, what percentage that is, I think it really depends upon how much work was it. Um, I want you to think of it this way. You know, if I, if I'm a waitress, how much do I tip the bartender for making the drinks? Well, that depends, right? It depends on how fast that bartender got my drinks out, were the drinks right, were the drinks good, were the customers happy, right? Um, if I was a solopreneur and I had bathers, then I would ask myself, what is my goal with my bathers? Is my goal for them to, to learn more? Um, and that's where I would be less concerned with tips and more about their long-term plan. Because if they're just going to be a bather and they're going to like stay here and hang out and not really do anything specifically, I think it's really important to say, okay, anything I give them is gravy. And they really shouldn't know how much I get in tips because it's my groom. Because with a bath dog, right, they do the bath dog. But if it's a groom dog, without the groomer, the groom wouldn't get done, right? That's the truth. It's again like the bartender, right? You know, the bartender, if I'm at the bar, I have a cocktail they would get a tip because there's a cocktail but without me sitting down to eat the meal the cocktail wouldn't come out right so oh jamie if if quincy tells me quincy's supposed to let me know but uh i'm sorry jamie was asking if you announce the uh holiday challenge winner will be 
That'd be, that'd be a good idea, actually. Quincy, we should have done that. I don't know. Tiffany, message Quincy for me. That would be really fun. Um, but yeah, so Ruth, if you want to give tips to your employees, I think that's really generous of you. And I think the key word is generous, right? It should not be expected because tips are not expected. But if you want to give them tips, that's great. And again, so when I teach, when I taught pay, we taught a tiered system. So it's based on the skill level and this and that. So to me, I personally, if my goal is for them to become groomers, I would say, hey, once you're able to do groomer assistant things, such as, you know, doing Grinch feet, shaving bum holes, doing eyes, right, where they can, again, practice and take that pressure off of me, right, then I would probably tip them out. And, and how much that is, it's up to you. It depends on how much you pay them. depends upon what you feel is appropriate. Um, I don't think it's unfair to give your groomers, I'm sorry, to give your bathers half. And I don't think it's unfair to give them only 20%, right? It really depends upon it because their goal should be learning and their learning is being subsidized by me. I am paying them to learn how to do these things, right? And so even if they don't make that extra money, they are getting free education. So don't feel like you're a bad owner if you don't tip at all. And I think whether you tip 10 or 20 or 50, I think no matter what, it's generous. Um, I will say I would not tip out daily. Whatever is the most important day for you, I would tip out at the end of the week. Okay. So if you want them to show up on Saturday, like in my shop, we tipped out on Saturdays after we closed and did the drawer and everyone was gone. Why? Because then everyone worked the rest of the shift. If you wanted to leave after a shift was done, you didn't want to wait till the shop was clean. You didn't want to wait till the drawer was done and everyone left. Then you could wait till the following, which was Monday, to get your tips. So that's the way we handle it. And it worked really well. So I hope that helps, Ruth. Uh, Candace had a great question. She said, I want more cat clients. How do I approach vet offices for referrals? So when you want more cat clients, you want to ask yourself, what kind of cat clients do I want? When you go to vets, you want to, you want to ask yourself first, is this vet the kind of vet that encourages bathing or are they going to encourage shaving? Um, and whatever kind of cat clients you want, you want to have something prepared. Um, depending upon your area, everyone has like a food item that everyone loves, right? Um, in some areas, it's going to be cookies. In some areas, it's going to be donuts. In some areas... That's going to be Dunkin' Donuts gift cards or Starbucks cards, whatever it is. Um, there's different ways of doing it. If you're really tech savvy, one way of doing it is messaging. And again, you don't have to be 100% honest, which I know sounds kind of shady. But you could say, hey, I noticed we have a, a few um, clients in common. I'd love to come in and talk about my services um, or even leave some information. Um, that way, if you guys are interested in continuing to refer me, I would really appreciate it. And that kind of like leads them to believe that you assume that they're already referring you. And if they say, oh no, we, we're not referring you. I'd be like, oh, that's so weird because we have so many clients in common. And it was just something you'd be interested in doing, right? But even if you just come in and again, vets offices right now are so overbooked, they're so overwhelmed, right? Even coming in and just having goodies and saying, hey, I have some brochures. I'd really love to schedule some time to talk together about being able to support the cat community. If that's possible, that'd be great. If not, can I send you an email follow-up? Is there anything I can do for you? Like, think about what you can do to take things off of their plate, right? And whether that is educating them or if that is helping them. You know, if you, if you want to shave a lot of matted cats, you can be like, listen, if you have cats and you don't want to shave them, you know, again, I know Candace is mobile. You're going to even be like, you know, we do offer a service where we come for a day, you know, and we can, you know, shave in your van or whatever. You can create these packages or whatever it is you want. Um, but the biggest thing is, they, sorry. 
And the biggest thing is to ask yourself, how am I going to take something off their plate? How am I offering a service that helps them out? You know, and I think that's important. And come from a place of humility and kindness and say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm really, you know, the clients that have you really love you. And I really appreciate the work that you do. You take such good care of these clients. And I just want to make sure that we connect and help each other out. Um, and make sure that the vets, even if they don't align 100% with your beliefs on grooming cats, make sure that they like cats. I will just say that. Or that they're not the kind of client I should say they're not, they don't have the kind of clients that are not going to pay. Um, for instance, um, how do I say this nicely? Like a lot of people believe less so with dogs, but more so with cats, that cats basically don't deserve medical care. And if that, that has people that don't believe their cats deserve medical care, then they're definitely not going to want to spend the money on grooming. So just keep an eye on that. But I think that, again, either reaching out through email or stopping by with goodies, you know, and again, you can have stuff and it's really awesome if you pull in with your van. And again, you pull in with the van, it's very professional, be like, oh, I'd love to give you a tour if you'd like. It's like no pressure. I just want to schedule some time with you for time. I know you're really busy. Is there anything I can do to help you guys? You know, do you want me to write a blog for your vet? page or I can do a video and do a shout out for you guys. Like, what can I do to support you? Again, they don't want, think of it this way. If a vet came to your van and knocked on the door, what do you want them to tell you? Right. You want them to tell you how they're going to help you gain more business. Right. And also how they're going to support you in your business. So I would do the same thing. Okay, so Crystal, I can't read it all. My main, so Crystal wrote, my if my main problem right now is not being able to hire more employees because locations are groom shortage, what course of yours do you recommend I take? So that depends. So I always say like our foundation course is our price increase masterclass. It's not always about how to increase your prices. It's also to make sure your pricing is aligned to what you want and that you're in a place that everything works really well. Um, and then the other question for you is what is it that you want in your business? Is there a growth that you want? Is it a restructuring that you want? Like if we could take a magic wand crystal, what is it in your business that you would like to see change? And for everyone that's different, right? So when I had my shop, I had five employees. We did about 40 dogs a day. It was like it was bananas. It was fun. It was really fun. And I really loved it. But I wanted to be the mom who dropped my kid off at school. I want to be the mom that dropped him off at kindergarten. And then I wanted to be the person that picked him up. And having that many dogs and having that much responsibility didn't really fit into what I wanted for that season, for better or for worse. So what I made it a point to do was reevaluate my business and my life. And that meant going mobile because I felt like, you know, I could drop them off in the van. I could go groom. I went cat exclusive, groom the cats, and then be done with it. So first things first, you want to make sure you have the right price point. Now, if you're kind of like, I just kind of like want to learn and dabble, then the business workshop library is a great place to go. Because again, you have at least, at least 20 hours of content to go through. You have 20 hours of classes for 200 bucks to go through and you have a year to go through it all. That's a great place to start. If you're like, I just kind of want to see what I, what I don't know. Right. Because a lot of times we don't know what we don't know. And so the business workshop library is a great place to go. If you don't know what you don't know. And then once you're there and you're like, okay, I really feel like this is something I'm struggling with. But I will say that anyone who takes any of our classes, I really feel like the foundation is the Price Increase Masterclass. And if there's other little things you want to work on and there's not a class that you feel like is appropriate, consider signing up for group mentoring. So group mentoring is a little bit different. <clears throat> so group mentoring is uh, a little bit different. It is... Uh, 
we meet on Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern. And for every 10 people, we add an hour and we talk about whatever it is that people are going through that week. So like today, we had classes about, um, actually, you know, I'll pull it up right now. I'll tell you exactly what we talked about in group mentoring today instead of me trying to remember. Gosh, have to, it's so funny because like sometimes I feel like, man, like I'm young and hip. And other times I'm like, oh, I completely forgot like what I did today. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so we went through one of our students had taken the price increase masterclass and she's going through her price increase. So she's using the group mentoring to help support her question. So every week she's posting like, hey, I noticed this, like, how do I fix this? Or I'm not sure if I should do that. Right. So that was really interesting. And that was really fun because, again, getting to know you guys on a more intimate level in group mentoring. You know, I know Kim. I know her business. I know her soulmate client. So we were able to rewrite her, um, you know, her her messages for her and help her work on a script. And then we had another business owner who was frustrated because she's posting in groups and in the groups, everyone's making millions of dollars, not literally, but hundreds of thousands of dollars. And a lot of it is this fake math that I see happen a lot of times. And I, I think it's not intentional, but... Um, a lot of it is people not, not being honest or not paying taxes or um, they're hobby groomers. And so the money they make is not because that's how much money they make. It's because their husband pays all their bills. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think it's really disingenuous to make someone else feel bad when they have to pay all their bills. Right. When in a perfect world. You should be paying yourself if you're paying in a groomer as an employee at 30% max payroll, including all of whatever you're going to do, and then maybe a 10% owner's draw. And it was really hard for her to learn that if she paid herself that 30%, it wasn't a livable wage. And I said, exactly. So you learn now that if you were to hire someone, you couldn't afford to hire somebody because they would not be making a livable wage. So that's where we have to consider raising your prices, um, which she already knew because she took the class. But I think sometimes it helps when you have someone to bounce that information off of um, in a call like this, very similar, you know, except everyone's allowed to speak and all that. So, yeah, um, I think that is really helpful. All right. So, Katie, you are our last question. And I do hope Crystal answers your question. And again, if you're like, I'm not sure what to take, the price increase masterclass is always a safe bet. Um, and if you're looking for just kind of seeing what you don't know, I would do the business workshop library. And then if you're like, you know, I really need one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I don't want to spend all of that money on, I mean, one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to be expensive. One hour one-on-one -on -one coaching guys, 400 bucks. A month of group mentoring is only two. That price is going to go up though. So if you want to join and lock in at that lower price, now is the time to do that. So Katie, you're going to be our last question of the day. And then I'll see you guys next month. I really like doing this. I think this is fun. We should do this. You know, we can do this once a month. That'll be great. Um, so Katie wrote, I've been open for a year and a half. When do I know that it's time to add an employee? So this is a really complicated question. And the very short answer is, why do you want to add the employee? A lot of times people want to add an employee because they want to take work off of their back, right? Um, and I do this thing, I, I haven't talked about this in a while. So I call it the circle of suck. So what happens is you have a grooming business owner, right, who hires someone, trains them to be a bather and then become a groomer. And they give them all the dogs that they don't want to groom. They give them the big dogs or the bad dogs or the dogs that are a pain in the ass, right? Or they, they get all the things that the owner doesn't want to do. And that person gets burnt out. They say, forget it. I'm getting 50%, right, or whatever. I'm going to open my own business. Then that person's open for one, two, three, sometimes five years before they're like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. I'm exhausted. I'm this, I'm that. So then they go and they hire someone, right? So, and then that person gets overwhelmed. Now I'm not saying that's what you're going to do, Katie. It's not saying at all, but that is the commonality in the industry. And the reason is that we don't take hiring people very seriously. So, 
in a perfect world, before you hire your very first employee, you really need to have a clear cut. What is the goal? How many employees do you want to have? And what kind of business are you going to have? If you're like, my goal is five to 10 employees. And again, let's say you want to have, you're like, I want to have five groomers and I want to have five bathers. It's like, okay. And if each bather is going, I'm sorry, every, if every groomer is going to do at least five dogs, right? Are you okay having a shop that's doing t- realistically 25 to 40 dogs a day? Is that the business you want? And if you're like, mm, no, that's probably not what I want. It's like, okay, then how many people do you want working in the space? How do you want that done? Right? Because before we hire the first person, we need to have our exit strategy. We need to say, okay, at the end of this road, what is the goal? And why do I want it to be that way? Um, And when you're becoming a manager, because once you hire your first employee, you are officially a manager. Your job is not to groom. Your job is not, right, to bathe and do all that. Your job is to make sure your employee knows what they're doing, knows the expectation, and you are nurturing their career. You know, when you take on the responsibility of paying someone's bills and stabilizing their home, we need to take that really seriously as an industry, especially as we're coming into really unstable, turbulent times. So once you know your end goal, right, and ask yourself, do I prefer to be a groomer or do I prefer to be the a grower of people? Do I like managing people? How many people do I want to manage? That's a really important place to ask yourself. Because if your answer is, I really hate being a boss. I don't want to fire people. I mean, no one wants to fire people, right? But if someone greatly disappoints you, how do you feel about telling them, hey, I know you rely on this job to feed your family and pay your bills, but it's just not working out, right? How are you going to feel when your groomer potentially comes in high or drunk, right? And you have to let them go. You need to know the long-term dream for the tribulations that go through. It's kind of like puppyhood, right? You know, when you have a puppy that it's going to do things that you don't like, but the goal is to raise a really good dog, right? And so, and again, I'm still not saying get rid of dogs, but with rate, with, with getting an employee, you're not always going to get the right fit the first time. It's a lot of work and the industry acts like it's no big deal. It's a very big deal. Um, We are literally creating three six hour classes, you know, six module classes are an hour each one. So that's six, 12, 18 hours on how to hire, manage and pay that staff. Because again, once you have them, you know, do you have a standard operating procedure manual, an SOP manual? Do you have an employee handbook? Do you have a clear path for them to gain promotions and raises? You know, what is it that you want them to do? And once you start your first employee, now you've changed your business model. Now you went from being a solopreneur to being a manager and a CEO, which is a very different mindset. And I think that, again, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually one of the best things you could do. I think one of the most generous, wonderful things you can do as an employee, as a business owner, right, is nurture the next generation of groomers or nurture the current generation of groomers. But we have to take it seriously. So the best time to know if you are ready to add a new employee or your first employee is do you have in place your SOP, your employee handbook, and your progression, your pay scale of how you're going to pay people? Is that sustainable? Are you going to add people? And when you add people, is that sustainable? Again, 50% gross commit, like 50% commission is not sustainable. You can't pay people half of gross and then add a bather, right? And then add a receptionist. There's not enough money on the bone, right? There's not enough meat on the bone to pay these people. That's why you see all these grooming salons having to shift, right? And then if that person with you for two years, 
how are you figuring out how much you're going to pay them? And then with that, how are you going to make sure the quality of work that they're doing is going to be that? So generally, when you first add your first employee, you're probably not going to make more money. You're actually going to break even or lose money when you get your first employee. You know, again, because just like we had an earlier question, you can't just book them a full day's worth of dogs and you a full day's worth of dogs. It's not how this works. The first 90 days during your probationary period, they're probably going to be grooming your dogs. That way, if they do something you don't like, you can fire them. They come in high, they come in drunk, they hit a dog, they yell at a dog, right? They do something that you just deem inexcusable. They don't listen, right? I can't tell you people I've had to fire because they just won't listen. And that's where too, having a good hire. And then for yourself, you know, how are you as a leader? What have you done to learn about becoming the very best leader and manager? Do you have the extra money and time to sit down and figure out how you're going to pay them, calculate pay, you know, are you going to be able to pay for a payroll service provider, a PSP? Like, how do you want to do that? Um, I feel like the when we had illegal independent contractors, guys, it was super easy to hire someone because you just like, like a per diem, just like, hi, random person. Do you want to work for me? No problem. And then if they mess up, I just like let them go. And there's no, there's no workers comp. There's no unemployment insurance. There's none of this, right? But that's not the way this is this works anymore. So I do think we need to be careful because a lot of the old school advice of just hire somebody is based on when we were doing illegal contracting. So, and I, and again, I think hiring is one of the best things you can do. Um, but even even just the managing class, like we're talking about creating culture. With this first employee, what are you going to do to create that culture? What kind of culture do you want? Do you want, uh, how many dogs do you expect them to groom? How much skill set do you expect them to have? How much are you going to invest in their education? How much do you expect them to invest? What is a fireable offense? What is a written up offense? You know, how, what are you going to do, right? And there's so many things. And even as a leader, what kind of leader are you? You know, I know as like, I, I love Myers-Briggs. It's a great example. And again, you can use, I don't care if you use astrology or human design or Myers-Briggs or DISC or Enneagram, whatever you want to use to learn about you, whatever speaks to you to learn who you are, your core, use it. But who are you as a fundamental leader? I know me as a fundamental leader, I am not a great manager because I don't like doing the day-to-day -day things. So I need everything automated. Why? Because I just want to double check the work. I want to have a great strong system in place. And then I can just check at the end to make sure it's working really well and putting things in place to make sure that it's easily checked. And I think that's the hardest part is building up a muscle that most of us have never had to learn. Because again, you know, being a manager and being a leader is a very different skill set than being a business owner. And that has nothing to do with being a groomer. And I think so often in the industry, we're told to take classes to be a really good, um, a really great groomer. But then it's like, okay, but being a business owner is a whole other skill set. Are you dealing with the clients and making sure that we have stability and we have all this abundance of money? That way, when we go to hire a first employee and we know we're going to lose money on them the first 90 days and we have that abundance of money, right? And if they're not the right fit, we're in a place of, you know what, this isn't working out and we let them go and there's no hard feelings versus most of us hire people when we're stressed out and we're anxious. When you hire your first person, you should be in a really great rhythm everything's really easy and you have a clientele who's ready and willing to let anyone in the business hand them over. And again, that's really important. We build our soulmate clients 
because a lot of us accidentally sell them on us and then they don't want anyone else to groom them, right? Um, someone said, my problem's not hiring, it's finding them. Well, again, there's only two ways to get groomers right now, right? It's either building your own or stealing them from another shop. That's the reality. And I know you can't steal people, like, calm down. But, you know, it's true. Like, it's either building, it's either getting people to come into the industry and taking them from square one of having zero knowledge, right, and building them up to being groomers. And that takes a lot of money and a lot of time and the right person to be there to nurture them along. Or you need to like, you know, what do they call that? Like feathering the nest, make your business so delicious that they are like, man, I need to come to this sweet spot. Right. And that's the truth. Um, and there's lots of ways to do it. Lots of benefits, lots of pay, lots of bonuses. Again, knowing what they care about. We're in a groomer shortage. We need 50,000 more groomers by 2030 to cover the people that have retired. Everyone is having trouble finding groomers. So the question is, are you going to feather the nest and make it so someone's like, you know what? That sounds like a great job. Whether it's like, you know what? I'd rather work for this person, like where every dog is under 20 pounds and all the dogs are done every four weeks and everyone tips and it's easy in this net. I go in, I groom the same dogs. I do all the same things and I go home, right? I can't tell you how many people are getting business owners that are closing their businesses and going to work for people, right? Um, and a lot of that is a really good business is creating that stability. When you create that stability, someone's like, you know what? I'm tired of doing all this work, right? But that depends on who you want to hire, but if you're not good with somebody who's constantly challenging authority, like me, I when I hire people that are business owners for Savvy Groomer, it's very different. I, I don't think when I had my mobile I or my shop, honestly. In fact, I know with my shop, I hired people that used to have their own business and we never meshed because I wanted things done my way. Um, that didn't work out for me. And that's because of my personality and the way I like to do business. But you might be more willing and open to um, collaboration. Um, I let, again, I don't enjoy being flexible on the day-to-day -day routine. I want the day-to-day -day routine to have a system and be perfect and like just run really smoothly with very little oversight or insight. I want the system to work itself. I think it's the least amount of effort it for me. Um, where somebody who doesn't mind putting in the day-to-day -day effort to constantly be shifting and sorting, they might be more flexible. Um, and that's, again, I can tell you what I think the best practices are, but you have to find what works best for you. Um, and that's really important. You know, again, if you're an introverted person and you want to hire extroverts, but you want them to go up front, well, you have to make sure your business is set up for that. All right. And there's so much involved there. I want you to ask yourself, you know, is your business built in a way that, you know, if you weren't current, let's say, let's say you're, you had like a massive, I don't want to wish anyone it will. Let's say snow, snow caved in your business. They're going to hand you a big, 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 um, I'm going to read that note too. Um, but, you know, if you, if you had like a massive storm and your business was wiped off the planet and you didn't have the money to start a new business, what would you be looking for in a business to work for? And it's not just money. If it's just money, you're probably a millennial or a Gen X. You know, Gen Z is, does not, it's not about money. And even a lot of millennials don't care about money. They care about work-life balance. Okay. Um, there's no amount of money that would make me work six or seven days a week unless it was mine. And even then I wouldn't work for it forever. All right. Um, someone said, I'm not sure, hundred percent sure, but I believe Joey Villani said it's about 10 dogs per groomer right now nationwide because there's such, there's such a group, there's such a groomer shortage. And that's where I think a lot of us need to, instead of, we really need to cut back and raise prices and get on things like memberships 
because to me, to me, it's like, okay, who are these people you really enjoy working with? And if you're in this really wonderful rhythm and you're doing the same clients and you have this like mutualness, adding someone to that, um, it's a really corny example, but I love the, the analogy um, of, you know, adding an employee is like, when, when should my, when should a couple have a baby? If you and the business are, are a couple, when should you add a baby? You should add it when you're incredibly stable. And this is somebody who was pregnant living in her car and had a baby out of wedlock. So take it for what's worth. Okay. But like in a perfect world, you would add a baby when you're in a healthy place in your relationship, you have more than enough resources. Um, someone can take a step back right? And let that grow because babies need to learn how to walk, right? And even if you hire a regular groomer, right? You can't, you both can't work a full day because again, if they quit, now what are you going to do? You don't, until you have a staff of four or five, that's not really how it works. Um, it is really important, but it's definitely in our favor. And again, this is where raising your prices getting clear on what you want, you being happy, you having more than enough is the most important thing. And then when you have more than enough, it's such a different place of hiring when you have more than enough and you have lots of free time in your business, which sounds crazy, but it happens. I swear to God, you can ask my students, you have lots of free time in your business and you're like, you know what? I would love to have a little mini me who's in this business they're growing, they're serving the clients, they're having fun. It would be fun to have this other person. That is such a different place of adding a person than when I, in my shop, my employees, I was like, I'm tired, I'm pissed, I hurt, I want to have someone to take the burden off of me. That is the worst time. That's like the person that has the baby to save the marriage, right? Don't do that. Um, or added, you know, with my son, it was an accident, right? Or like these, almost these accidental hires where you're like, this person comes in, you're like, I guess I could hire them. You know, you have to do all the work in a perfect world before they come. What is the pay? What it, What am I expecting them to do? Um, create a non-assumptive SOP manual. Remember, if I said to you, hey, can you get me a drink, right? Most of us, because we're groomers, have an assumptive brain. If it's in the morning, you're going to go and get me a cup of coffee. If it's at night, hopefully you get me a cocktail, right? Right, except you didn't actually ask me what kind of drink do I want, right? Do you want a glass or do you want it in a cup? And you want like a cup like this? You want a cup like this, Right? You, that's where a lot of our brains go and you can't have an assumptive brain with an employee. You have to be non-assumptive and be like, what I need you to do is walk into the kitchen. The kitchen is downstairs. You're going to go into the, uh, you're going to go into the cupboard. The cupboard's right near the sink. It's above the sink on the left. You're going to pull out a glass. It's going to be like this kind of glass. You're going to go ahead. You're going to go to the fridge and the fridge on the door. There's going to be a little filter thing. We're going to hit um, some ice. I want like a half fill with ice. And I want you to fill it all the way to the top with water. Now, over near, you know, the other side, there's going to be a drawer with, you know, spoons and forks and things like that. There's also going to be a straw. I'd like the straw in there. All right. And then you're going to go upstairs to my office. And so you're going to go up two flight of stairs. You're going to notice a door that's white. You're going to go through the door. And my office is upstairs. Right. And that's the problem is that a lot of us don't have the energy or the patience for that. But that's what we need to do. We need to have that whole conversation with everything in our business. And ideally have that in writing and be ready to support that person. All right, guys. Well, it's been awesome spending time with you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for coming to December's happy hour. I can't wait to see you guys next month. Feel free in the uh, Savvy Pet Pro to post any questions you guys have, you know, obviously we're going to be answering them throughout the month and we'll be talking as a group. And um, if you have questions about classes, again, 
our, our basic class that I highly suggest everyone take is the price increase masterclass. Um, if you're looking for like, if you're saying, I don't know what I don't know, the business workshop library is a great place to go. Again, you've like 15 to 20 hours worth of workshops where you can kind of get a taste of everything. And then beyond that, a lot of it comes down to what is it that you want to do? How do you do that? Right. And everyone's different. And if you want more specialized care and more one on one time, but don't want to pay for one on one coaching, our group mentoring opens from the first to the fifth of the month. It's a once a week coaching call in a group. It's a great time. It's a great group. And we'd love to see you guys there. Well, take it easy. And as always, guys, happy grooming.